Every year in the early spring, I make weekly trips to my favorite spot on a local river to check the temperature of the water and to look for one of my favorite native fish. And each year when I return to the river, everything seems to be different because the riverbed changes constantly as if it were alive. Old familiar rocks that I'm used to seeing have now disappeared and new ones have been exposed by the current. Rock, sand, and silt are also transported by the current from one part of the river to another, and when the current slows down, anything that's suspended in the water column will settle to the bottom and collect in a pile. And if this was a river in Indonesia, this pile of leaves that has settled on the bottom might make a perfect spot to find a group of coolie loaches. But the fish that I'm looking for likes to have its water moving a bit faster. Fish that prefer to live where there's a steady current are called rheophiles, and if you wanted to use that word as an adjective, you'd say that those fish are rheophilic. Some examples of rheophilic fish in the aquarium hobby include hillstream loaches, Placostomus catfish, darters, the pandagera, and most of the freshwater gobies such as the stiffodons. And when unrelated species of fish evolve in similar habitats, they will often develop the same physical appearance and even use the same behaviors to cope with similar challenges in the environment. So there are fish on opposite sides of the planet that look and act just like each other due to the fact that they've evolved in the same type of environment. And this similarity in the appearance of creatures that are only distantly related is known as convergent evolution. And there are examples of it all around the world. And now it's time to meet the star of the show. This is a tessellated darter, and it loves to live where the water's always moving, but the problem with that is it's easy to get swept away by the current. So the darter has several adaptations that help it maintain its position along the bottom of the river. These large pectoral fins act like wings, and when the fish faces into the current, the force of the water hitting these enlarged fins pushes the fish down towards the bottom of the river and helps to keep it in place. Many fish that live in high-flow environments have modified either the pectoral fins or the ventral fins to help them keep from being swept away. Most rheophilic fish species are also benthic, which means that they live at the bottom of the habitat. Benthic fish don't usually have a swim bladder, and if they do have one, it's typically very small. Many benthic fish species also have eyes that are positioned near the top of the head. Speaking of which, the tessellated darter has excellent eyesight, which it uses to distinguish its food from all of the other moving bits and pieces at the bottom of the stream. And since these fish aren't very strong swimmers, they rely on their camouflage to avoid predators. So, be sure to notice how perfectly this fish blends in with its environment. They are true masters of camouflage. And once again, take notice of the enlarged pectoral fins as they work to keep the darter anchored near the bottom of the stream. This is a large male, and we're at the tail end of the breeding season, so his colors have faded somewhat, but they'll return again next spring. Tessellated darters are one of the most common darter species in the U.S., and they're also one of the most tolerant of poor water quality. And I'm quite certain that those two things are probably connected. They do well in a river-style aquarium that has a sandy substrate and a small pile of rocks. They can be a little tricky to feed, and it might take them some time to accept prepared foods such as frozen adult brine shrimp and frozen bloodworms, but they'll probably never eat flake food. They prefer cool, highly oxygenated water, so you probably won't need a heater. And they're not really aggressive unless it's a male and he's protecting his eggs.
Some darter species are incredibly beautiful with bold colors and patterns, but it's only the males that are brightly colored, and it's only during the spring spawning season that they display their best colors and patterns. But don't let that deter you from keeping these fascinating native fish in your aquarium. And if you don't like this particular species of darter, there are many others to choose from. And some of the darters in the U.S. are among the prettiest freshwater fish on the planet. Unfortunately, the tessellated darter is the only darter species in my area, so it's the only one that I can film in the wild. I go out and film these darters every spring, so I have some amazing footage of the males sporting their brightest colors as they battle with each other for dominance. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for joining me on this journey to the bottom of the river to see things that people rarely ever get to see.